you're already pushing We're recording. already recording. Oh, you're already recording? Yes. Oh, wow. Hey. We have the blooper reel. Welcome to Professionalville. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Carl Stark, and I am a technologist. Uh, what's a technologist? A technologist is somebody who studies the technology and the behind the scenes and everything on Star Trek. And so, as you can imagine, anything that officially comes out about the show that gives us information is something that I am waiting to see and quite excited to have come out. It used to be that back in the conventions of the late 80s and 90s and probably even earlier than that, uh, what happened was is that we would go to conventions to get the latest source books and latest information like the Star Trek technical manuals and fan-made technical manuals and fan-made supplements and official supplements too, sometimes even unofficial supplements depending upon who the publisher might have been. So when at the Las Vegas 2015 Star Trek convention, when it was announced that a brand new two volume set of the Star Trek Encyclopedia was coming out, as you can imagine, I am very excited. Today is Tuesday, October 18th. Here from Amazon is my pre order of the Star Trek Encyclopedia, a brand new version from. Michael and Denise Akuda. Thank you both of you for putting this together. Looking forward to seeing what's in it. We're going to have a little bit of an unboxing here. And before I did that, I wanted to go ahead and talk about some of the previous stuff that had come out that I think any person who studies Star Trek in general should probably at least have in their library if you can find them. Now, if you can't find them, that's fine. I know sometimes eBay and Amazon can't, can't uh, have these things anymore, but if you can find them, great, they're wonderful, and they will help you in research. Now, I, own, I can already hear some people saying, but what about Memory Alpha? What about the Wikipedia? I edit both Memory Alpha and Memory Beta. I uh, help with both of those items. However, as Probably like a friend of mine named Larry Nemechek, and some of you know who those who that who that is probably knows that he is he's he's done some of his books of his own. I'm pretty sure that he and I would agree that in order to put it down in print, you've got to have your details straight. You've got to have your details correct. Wikipedia is a wonderful for groups of people coming in and putting stuff together. Memory Alpha, Memory and Beta have been wonderful sources for getting this stuff done. Um, unfortunately, the bad thing about this is that anybody can come along and throw anything they want in there. And luckily, with both of those sites, we, we patrol them pretty quickly and pretty regularly so we can keep the bad stuff out, but there's no guarantee. With printed material, yes, there can be mistakes, and yes, there some, sometimes there can be interesting little tidbits that we're going to talk about here in just a second with that but again this is permanent it's almost like chiseling in stone and that's part of the reason I love these books my lovely wife who's recording this for me say hi hi <laughs> uh, she has actually asked me why do I still get some of these books uh, when a lot of this information is now available on the internet and my response has always been I am a backup to the internet. I, I, will, I will be one of those people when we have our apocalypse putting the stuff back up there as soon as I can. B. Joe Trimble was one of our first pe persons to go ahead and try to document Star Trek for us. This is her second edition of actually her Star Trek Concordance. And this is the third edition. The first edition was... Uh, basically uh, spiral bound. It was very uh, not very professionally published. These were professionally published. This was done. Oh, uh, what was the copyright on this bad boy? Um, this was '76. So as you can imagine, getting a hold of one of these is probably a major fine for at least the collectors' wise. 
the information in it is still very good, still very useful. This one was the update that she did right after the first Star Trek Encyclopedia by Denise and Michael Okuda came out. And essentially, it is also very good. It also contained information about TOS, uh, the original series, that had made its way into Next Generation DS9 and a few others. Um, and of course, this one came out in... Uh, what was the copyright on this one? This one came out in 1995, so this book alone is more than 20 years old. Now, the nice thing about this book that the other books do not have is that they contain information about all of the animated series, which I know there's a little bit of a debate about whether the animated series should or should not be documented. My line of thought is document the information, but... Again, let the fans decide what they want to consider canon or not canon, or not to make this a canon issue, or what's acceptable or not acceptable, and the like. I do know that some of the Deep Space Nine writers uh, in the later episode, later seasons of Deep Space Nine tried to put seasons or tried to put references to original uh, animated series in their episodes. I'm pretty sure this book had it come out when those episodes had been released, would probably have documented some of that information there as well. But if you need any information that wants to include the animated series, this is a book to get. Now, this is going to be the third edition of the Star Trek Encyclopedia. Our first edition was black and white on the inside. Um, as you can see, it's done by Denise Akuda, uh, Michael Akuda, and Debbie Merrick. So thank you to all three of those people for working on this. This book came out in 1994. I remember being in line at a Barnes & Noble to buy this book. And the reason why I remember what happened that day is because it's the exact same day that Kurt Cobain killed himself. I know, kind of a weird twist and kind of a weird way to remember it, but sometimes you just remember things just because of historical events. I remember flipping it open, and the Galar class warship was the first entry that I read on this. Now, what you may not know is that technically there are two versions of this book. There were entries that had been altered and changed in a separate printing of this particular book. It had the same cover on it. It didn't say 2.0. It didn't have any additional information or anything like that, uh, that, that that indicated it was different. The way I found out about this is that in the early days of the internet we had things called BBS's and message boards and what we did is that I was talking with somebody about one of the entries in the book and they said, well wait a second, how come your entry says this when my entry says this? I was able to actually track down copies of both books and what I did is I wrote a comparison guide as a supplement, an addendum, so that if you had version 1 and you didn't have version 1.5 as I called the second book, you didn't have to go out and spend the money to go ahead and try to find the second book, you could just kind of compare the two. It actually had a good Oh, I, had, I probably had a good about 10, 12 pages in there of probably about a good 50 or so items that had been changed. Now, granted, some of them were just minor word changes, but there were some that actually did kind of change. Some of the slightly give some additional information or even took out some information uh, regarding some of the entries that were in this. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So, love this book. Glad it came out. Glad the authors, glad that Pocketbook and Paramount were basically able to go ahead and authorize this. Uh, again, if you had this book, you knew how much of a, of a, of a gold mine it was. Now, eventually, they updated the Star Trek Encyclopedia. And again, there were two versions of this one, too. This is the uprated, updated and expanded version. And this one had the problem of is that 
you had episodes of Deep Space Nine, you had episodes of Voyager, and this was even before Enterprise came out. So you had all this information in here about you are you had missing episodes, missing information in here, and eventually, that's part of the reason I think this book kind of went onto the wayside is because it couldn't keep up with all the new and latest information. And then what eventually what they had to do is they had to add 128 pages, as it says right here, onto the back with additional information. Now, the other nice thing about this, too, is that it had the graphics in color. And one of the other things that they did is that in the original book, they had this top bar, both on the top and on the bottom, and to try to squeeze more information in there, they actually took that bottom bar out and pushed it down to the bottom as much as they could. They were trying to find ways, we're talking about the Akutas, they were trying to find ways to put more information in here. Again, thank you for all the hard work you guys have done. Uh, nice being everything in color, and basically it has helped quite a bit for the people who are in the technology and online discussion world about all this other stuff. So now, without further ado, here is a very, very heavy box. This came from Amazon. I actually purchased it a couple of months ago. I would like to thank the family members who gave me Amazon gift cards to go ahead and use however I wanted to. Amazon gift cards make wonderful gifts. If you ever want to give me a gift, thank you very much. And also, Amazon was offering the book, which was $150, for $88. Well, by the time I used all my gift cards, basically I paid and ended up paying about 30 bucks for the books, which is basically how much we would have paid for these. Actually, this guy, yeah, this guy right here was 30 bucks right here on the cover price. Um, I will forewarn you, there are two books in here. The reason being is because a friend of mine also wanted a pair of books so badly that he gave me his money. And so I will be holding his books for ransom until he comes over to visit me. Hi, Frank. But uh, this is the first time I've ever done an unboxing of this, of this nature. So, of course, we want to be careful. Getting all this stuff done. And, of course, Amazon, when they actually do it themselves, does a very good job of keeping everything protected. Here is, you know, the little air bubble things. Where's the old bubble wrap? You know, pop, pop. <laughs> so I am going to pull out two books here. So normally when you order this, holy cow, this thing is bloody heavy. Yeah, no kidding. I lifted both of them. <laughs> There's the first book. The second copy of said book. Nothing else in the box. Nothing up a sleeve. Very good job, Amazon. Make sure I give you guys some kudos for that. But as you can see, this is how you are going to find this book in the stores, if you happen to go to the stores. It is going to be shrink wrapped like this. It is going to be very heavy. I could drop this on a rat right now and kill the rat. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> Everything on this table shook badly. Now, granted, this is just a plastic table, but still, nonetheless, don't do this at home, kids. I'm a professional. Professional. So what, you, you might say. Ask. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it says the Star Trek Encyclopedia Revised and Expanded Edition, just like the other one did. Uh, it's got some nice circuitry on the cover. This is obviously a slip case. Um, no, Frank, this is my copy I dropped on the ground, so no, don't worry about it. Um, in fact, let's take Frank's, put Frank's away so Frank's doesn't get damaged. And, of course, it says a reference guide to the future, Michael Akuda and Denise Akuda. Uh, same thing on the side here. Interesting little logo here for Harper Design. Oh, I guess we an H in a circle. That's interesting. Uh, the bottom, we've got our UPS code, our ISBN code, Performing Arts Television General. Of course, $150. Yes, I know, ouch, but you know what? 
this is going to be worth it. This is going to be Okay, perfect. you're all right. I heard that big thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Didn't mean to scare anybody. <laughs> I'm already attracting the attention of my mother-in-law upstairs. She heard me drop the box. Throwing stuff around. Throwing stuff around. Uh, so, of course, we've got the information on that side. We've got the volume 1 and volume 2, which, of course, is A through L and M through Z. And then on the back here, as you may have seen briefly, is a sample of what's in the books. Now, those of you who've been paying attention to Star Trek.com, they actually gave us a bunch of pages from the books already, and it actually has caused some a little bit of controversy from some of the people wanting to discuss starship sizes and a few of the things as well. Uh, the sample page they give here in the back shows William Shatner's Captain Kirk and it looks like his life lifeline and also some Federation starships and starships of Earth registry and again I love starships which is part of the reason I wanted to go ahead and get this book. Uh, cover design was by Rosebud Eustach. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that name. Uh, Eustach? Eustach? And, of course, uh, it's got its copyrights in there from CBS and Paramount Studios. Uh, this is covering, it says, For more than 50 years, Star Trek has invited fans to imagine a future full of strange worlds, incredible technological, technological and scientific advancements, fascinating life forms, and new civilizations. Now, the Star Trek Encyclopedia has been updated with complete information covering Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, and Star Trek Enterprise, as well as most recent feature films of Star Trek Nemesis, Star Trek 2009, and Star Trek Into Darkness. So if you guys recall, those books, or those, those movies, had not come out yet. The expanded two volumes with more than 4,000 images and 300 additional pages of content, including illustrations created especially for this edition, plus countless cross-references. This particularly research encyclopedia is the ultimate reference book for all Star Trek fans. So, discover great authors and more opportunities there at their website. So now, without further ado, again, carefully... We're going to go ahead and peel away the plastic on this. No, I'm not going to be like Mr. Data opening up his gifts and try to keep the paper all nice and neat so it can be really We might later. use that later! <laughs> That's obviously going into the recycle. It looks like our page on the back here is stuck on with that sticky tack stuff. Oh, it is. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and just rub that off real quick. Am I going to save this? <laughs> yes, I am. Why? Probably because I'm insane. Without the paper on the back, it's just got that circuitry design. Oh my gosh. Again, these things are just bloody heavy. I mean, this last one here, it came in both hardbound and softbound. And as you can see with how many times I've opened it and closed it and done everything, I've actually worn out a couple of these already. So, I like the hardbound. Because I know the hardbound is going to... Be difficult coming out of here. Again, kids, don't try this at home. I'm a professional. I can see Larry Nemechek right now, remembering the time I was trying to open up his Star Trek stellar cartography in front of him, and I couldn't do it because they had done a weird design on the box in there. This should just slip out. Hoping, when, hoping to maybe I went ahead and cropped it, I didn't break anything. There shouldn't be anything in here that's breakable. Alright, hold on just a second here.
If you guys have as much problem as I do getting this out, let me know. Holy cow, this thing is... I'm not going to put these back in the case. How often I'm going to be referencing the book. I mean, that's 150 years of, of the Federation reference book that came out a couple years ago. I ended up keeping that in this case, too, just because of the fact that I was wanting to reference the book quite a few times. And there is a little place where it's... You're not actually supposed to look at the books. Yeah. You look inside them. They, you, they're just to sit there on the shelf and look pretty. You, you just sit on the shelf and look pretty. Oh my gosh, really, for the love of... Yes, I'm pretty sure there's a few people laughing at me right now. I'm glad I've given you some entertainment. There we go. It looks like you need to work one book out. This is M through Z. There's the side. The back is the black circuitry pattern again and now that we actually have one of the books out I can reach in here with my fingers and get the other book out this is A through L this obviously has the Constitution class on it of the USS Enterprise NCC 1701 no bloody A B C or D and of course this is our Galaxy Class Enterprise from Next Generation. On the back of this one is the same circuitry pattern. Inside the box, very freshly smelling. I'm not seeing anything that would have caught the why it was being such a pain trying to get this bloody thing open. Something tells me I'm not putting those back in the box for a while since I'm going to be referencing. Probably not ever because you don't have a machine to put them back in the box. <laughs> Other people, let me know if you had the same problems getting the stupid books out of the box. All right. So, I'm not going to read the whole book to you. And your phone won't record that much video. <laughs> Audet 9 is the first entry again. My wife showing me geeky things on her phones. But uh, there is an introduction in here. It looks like they've got a, de a dedication to their parents. Um, I guess they talk about how many times people have asked about will there be new issue or new printings of the encyclopedia. Uh, an acknowledgement to all the people who have worked and helped on stuff before. In fact, there is Larry Nemercheck, and there is B. Joe Trimble, and all the thanks to the different people in there. Oh, by the way, what's interesting is in one of these earlier books, one of my friends, uh, Dennis Hollinger, was actually listed as one of the people who actually helped send in some corrections on the first encyclopedia. So... Um, let's see here, of course the great bird of the galaxy, uh, there's the advanced photon torpedo from Star Trek Into Darkness, and everything's in color, um, I mentioned the earlier book where it had the top bar and the bottom bar, uh, there is a top bar, but it's kind of merged with the edge, and then the bottom bar is a lot skinnier. There, if you can see that. And I'm looking to see what's going to be the first thing that's going to jump out at me really, really bad. And just say, ooh, you've got to read me. Oh, wow. Actually... There's a good picture of the Ambassador-class starship. 
And I want to say that that does not look like any of the renderings that we have seen before. So it looks like we've got some new renderings here from some of the different items. For those of you who like Andorians, there's some good Andorian costumes in here. Ah, okay, here's a good piece of information. Um, one of the other things that has happened, besides all of the new movies that have come out and the remaining episodes of DS9 and Voyager and stuff that weren't in the original book, we had the remastered original series episodes come out. I just pulled up USS Antares, and they are showing the remastered vessel from the USS Antares here. Um, as you know, in the original Charlie X, it was not seen at all. And then in the uh, remastered, they showed it, which basically looks like the animated series robot grain cargo with a literature pot on the front of it. Um, so that's interesting. So if you're wondering about items from the remastered Star Trek, it looks like those are here. We're going to go ahead and skip a bunch of pages now. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the colors change along the top. I had not noticed that. So when you have some on the top here, where you've got A, you kind of know it's a kind of a burgundy red. A bur you know, I guess that's a burgundy red, isn't it? What kind of a red is that? Maroon. Maroon. Okay, maroon red. And then if we go to the next letter... We changed to B, which is orange. Makes a rainbow along the top of the pages and close the oh, book wow. at the top of the pages. Oh yes, it does. Look at that. That is an interesting little feature. I didn't even think about that. That'll probably help you when trying to pull out the when trying to pull out the proper the the, the, the letter if you get to notice this. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. There's C. There's the Crushers. There's the Delta Flyer 2. <laughs> and along the top here, they tell you what is the topmost entry, and over here is the bottommost entry. So you know it's between these two items. So here, on page 230, the first entry is eggs with bacon and corned beef hash. For those of you who are wondering why that's got an entry in here, it's because it's the traditional earth breakfast foods are high in fat. Miles O'Brien enjoyed two eggs over easy, three strips of bacon, and a side of corned beef and hash for breakfast. If I recall, I think it gave Nog gas. Luckily they didn't put that part in here. And the last part is Tam Elbrum, who is of course the Betazoid who they went to go visit the Tin Man with. These colors and images are very well done. Okay, so here's an episode that they do they do by because they have episode uh, entries in here as well. Very brief description, and of course, like they did in the earlier in the earlier versions of the encyclopedia, if you can find the episode at the bottom, it lists all the reference all the references from that episode. There were many times that I was doing research for the trivia for my Star Trek club, trying to find answers on answer sheets or for, for merit sheets, or just trying to pull up more information. Like, I remember it was in this episode, I'd pull up this episode, go down, look at the thing here, and then go look at the various entries for it there. Now, what I'm really curious about is coming back here to the very end of the book and seeing how they end it. Oh, interesting. This isn't the end of the book yet. 
But apparently they've got a complete listing of all the life forms, including what episode or film they first appeared in. All right. So, our very last page. Come from the back here. Oh my. I have no idea why this is on the very end. But it says page 493, Planets of the Star Trek Universe, and it lists various planets by their images. But we're still in the L, so we haven't made it to P for planets yet. So I'm really curious of why they chose to end the first book with the planets. And one of the planets is Vulcan. So it's not just because of the fact that these are planets that are, with, that are within the first book itself. All right, so that's book number one. Book number two. Let's see how it begins, because we've already had the introductions in the other book. Oh, there's a wonderful quote in here with a picture, a nice picture of the Constitution Class Enterprise and a nebula there. Why we are now going into space, question mark. Well, why did we trouble to look past the next mountain? Or prime, uh, our, our prime obligation to ourselves is to make the unknown known. And that was said by Gene Roddenberry. For those of you who don't know, I run the daily Star Trek Quotes uh, Twitter account at S Trek Quotes is the account and essentially I love quotes from Star Trek and about Star Trek so that'll be added to my master list there thank you very much Denise and Mike Akuta for putting that in there they do have to put in the usual uh, copyright information probably because of the fact that they don't know if you're going to find this book by itself or not and then essentially they just start off with the M's uh, looks like it's the same color as the A's so I believe we have the same rainbow pattern here at the top. Uh, let's go ahead and just start. There's Marcus Alexa Alexander Marcus, from played by Peter Weller in Into Darkness. Mayweather. Oh, I was. They have an entry for Mission Patch, and I was hoping they'd show us a bunch of Mission Patches on here. Entire section on mirror uniforms. 